I've, I've done some sessions with you guys. I've done some other emotion code and other things. Uh, I never have once gotten into the dirty, grimy details of my trauma in depth with you guys. Mm -hmm. And I've experienced more uplifting health and healing than I have with laying on the psychiatrist's couch and just going into all the details for some weird reason. I don't think that's where the healing is. Right. I think there's part of it. You, you, you got to go back and face some of your trauma, relive it, understand it fully. But that's not the full process of healing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you guys are looking for healing, if, if your mental health is wrong, if you have some trauma that you need to deal with, like dealing with it in a positive way, this is the future of medicine. This is the future of, of, of mental health. On today's episode, we have Blake Norton, one of the producers of this podcast with Blue Form Media. We talk about mental health. We talk about uh, military service. We talk about the human design. Out he goes through uh, uh, some human design with them and how that will benefit everyone. So we hope you enjoy. Since we're talking about mental health, I think a lot of people, if you don't have intentions... We've been told our whole life what you should intend to do, right? We, that's what the education system is. It's not how to think critically or think right. for yourself. It's we're going to tell you how to think. We're going to tell you how to do things. We're going to tell right. you what's expected of them. We're going to tell you the schedule. You got to be at this class at this time. You got here's your locker. Here's uh, you're going. You have biology at third period. You know you have this and that. There's and, a test and there's one right yeah. answer. Yeah, and exactly. you can't collaborate. You can't work together in a community. Exactly. Now with like the sciences and, an and stuff, I understand there's more rigidity. Like there right. has to be structure. Right. Right. So I'm not against like a structure, but like when all you know is structure and then you get out of that structure, same thing with military, all these guys know is structure. Yeah. And they get out of those things and now you have to start thinking for yourself. Now you have to decide what kind of clothes you like to wear. Like, cause I was the dude in the military that I didn't know what kind of civilian clothes I used to wear. Mm -hmm. But like some of the Marines, I was like envious of them because we'd, we'd show up for liberty yeah. and like they got some like, they got a style that's unique to them. Mm -hmm. Like they got a, a specific band shirt on, the Converse, like mm -hmm. the jeans. They're looking sharp. And I'm just like, hey, they have swag. <laughs> like, I got this cargo t -shirt. shorts and like a, yeah. a 12 year old t-shirt and like, yeah. I don't even, I don't even have enough identity to know like what band I like, you right. know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know. I just was like. I was never into that stuff anyway, but I never had like an identity and I was kind of jealous of that. So getting out of the military and stuff was like, like who, who what the do hell I do? am I? Right. Yeah. What are my intentions? Cause if you don't have intentions, then it gets filled with all this wasteful stuff and, and well, that's it's what's super. And you take it on from yes. yeah, your, the external world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, you're, you're open to someone else doing it for you, giving you the intention. Right. Mm -hmm. That's like people, some people like to go to school. And I was like, uh, I can't picture myself doing that. I, I hate school. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Well, and it's what do you want, exactly. right? Which isn't – which th the the structure is good, but without flexibility and adaptation, mm -hmm. it could be a hindrance. Yeah. Right? Because then you're so structured that when you get out of it, you're like, what do I do? Like, that happened to me. That happened to you. I think yeah. that happens to a lot of men in these similar scenarios. Uh, and women alike, uh, we just know that that authentic self, the qualities that each person possesses, those lie within your heart. Yeah. Right. And so if you don't know your purpose, it's, you know, sometimes you have to, not sometimes, most of the time you have to start going through motions to find that purpose, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't know until you try. But yeah. I think so many people are so highly capable that we shoot ourselves in the foot like I, you know, I come across people in different industries all day long. They're like, dude, you'd be great at this. And I'm like, you know what? I could do that. Yeah. I could go do that. I could go do this. I could go do that. But, but one of my heart qualities and what, what, when I'm saying heart qualities and everyone's different, like when babies are born, we measure the frequency of heartbeat. And even before babies are born, we measure the frequency of the heartbeat. And the frequency, because we can, with heart math, with heart rate variability, we can 
identify frequencies of heartbeats, which are emotions. Yeah. And, you know, we know that a baby, every baby's frequency of their heart is love, right? So like purpose is love and to be loved, right? People probably yeah. heard that before. But within that, you also have, like for me, your heart qualities will start coming and being very apparent to you the more inner work you do. So for me, as I go through and there's exercises, we do heart mapping and, you know, your heart focus, breathing and meditations. And the more you get internalized and remove these emotions that create your subconscious, that create your identity. Yeah. Right. And a lot of the time that is a false identity based off of external validations yeah. or what other people have told you and conditioning. Oh, you and most of the time it. there is because right now yeah. what, what Alti's uh, really diving into, uh, she likes to say delving into. And, and, that's, the, and that's the proper delve, word anyway. Dive, I'm just, dive. And dive and delve, but uh, is the human design and there are actual, you should say it, not I, but... <laughs> There are, delve into there are, yeah, there are, there are different designs right, like that make, birth, that, make time were you born? that make a lot of sense uh -huh. and start to show people that, you know, it's like a personality typing and things like that, oh, but yeah, a lot deeper. But what happens is um, a lot of people are doing things that just aren't congruent with, with who they are. your heart qualities yeah. because you can do them. That's willpower, determination, yeah. effort. You Like, look, you can out effort a lot of stuff. Right, you can out willpower a lot of stuff, and that's They're good. Kind of like forcing it, yeah. But what we want to do is we want to live in purpose, and that purpose is is flow, and mm -hmm. that is the heart brain coherent state. When the heart is opened up and fully expanded, your heart qualities will start becoming right. very apparent to you. I right, the that. subtle whisperings of the heart. You can call it if you're uh, religious uh, and spiritual. You can call it the the whisperings of the spirit because. <laughs> that God and spirit speak directly to heart. Heart is yeah. the, the most powerful organ. The first it's like organ whatever created, label they pick. The most intelligent organ. Yeah. So, um, but the subtle whisperings of the heart and spirit will start telling you what your purpose is. And when we look at mental health and people that struggle, it's because they're not feeling their divine purpose. They're not, you know, they're not participating in that. They're doing something that doesn't resonate with them. Yeah. Right. And resonate, uh, uh, resonate. When you look at resonate, that's just frequency, right? Frequency mm -hmm. vibrate, a vibration produces a frequency and that is a, re you know, a resonant frequency. So when, when it's not resonating with you, it's because it's not in line with your heart's electromagnetic oh, yeah. field, electromagnetic field. And so we want to open up that heart and that has to do with removing those emotions from the subconscious and activating the heart and with heart rate variability. But like for me, mine is, uh, you know, teacher and, and service. Like those are two of my major heart qualities. That's why mm. I like to help people. And those are so broad. Right. But we're we're trained by society to zoom in on one thing. Right. And like we have all these expectations with that. So I have to be this way exactly. And uh dude, you just nailed it. Like it's it's everything. And that's a funny, like people say resonance. Um, they say like, oh, check your vibe, mm -hmm. like vibrational, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah, right. it's a bad vibe. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we're aware of all of this, I think, subconsciously, but we never like put it into a tangible mm -hmm. thing. That's why mm -hmm. I think you guys are so fascinating in what you're doing. But I mean, you were gonna. Oh, do you know? Do you know what time you were born? It was like uh, seven. I want to say seven forty-three or two. Okay. Okay. Pretty. A.M. or P.M. Spot on. Yeah. Okay. I remember because you have to morning. know within A.M. Okay. okay. This is super interesting, and I think I have a lot of answers for you. Just boom, like right here, right now. We're just gonna we're gonna solve a lot so of to, the questions. Welcome to the answer workshop. Yes. <laughs> so just to recap, you're on a specific app. Yeah. So so I've been working, um, doing expanding out the work that I do mm. um, in the human design. So uh. this is kind of what got me into the work anyway that led me to the emotion code and body code was I really started to, I've always been intrigued with per people's like personality types or their driving core motive, right? And so when I was in high school and then um, when I was going through my divorce, I, yeah, I, I really got into the people code, which is, you know, the, the, the color code. So mm. red p people yeah. who are red personalities are driven by power. Blue is connection. Yellow, yellow is fun. Green, right? 
Yellow and white. white. Yellow That's is right. fun and white is peace. And so when you know that someone's driving core motive is what it is. So I'm a, I'm split down the middle, a yellow and white. So I want to have fun and I want to have peace. So that makes sense that conflict, I'm out. Mm. I don't like conflict. She leaves the room. I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to fight with you. You know, I mean, I'm better at it now. Whatever. In my you 40s, fight with me all the time. In my 40s. Hey, listen, <laughs> kidding, I have doesn't. developed some skills, <laughs> yeah. but it, but it made sense to me that I was like, no wonder why I, you know, on, when I'm living in empowerment, I'm, that's the yellow side of me. I'm that I want to be yeah. a part of the community fund. Yeah life of the party. Um, but when I am, um, on the defense, I, the white in me is that you, you wall up. Peace. Yes. And so it's like path of least resistance, confrontation, conflict, I'm out. Um, and so I've had to learn how to, you know, be a little more assertive. I, I was very passive and then I turned passive aggressive. And then, so I had to, you know, develop the skill of being more assertive. Point is, is that I really started into this work by looking at people's personality types and understanding why they do what they do. It's like, well, they do that because they're peaceful. They don't want to fight. So you think they're lazy. I see it as, of course, they're going to do that. They're, they're a white personality. Yeah. They're out, you know, or I see. or a blue. Their their whole thing is they do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. But that overused can become bitterness because they're managing everybody else and policing everyone else going, that's not right. That's not fair. You shouldn't yeah. do that. I you do know? this standard. So you should be held to that. standard. Yes, exactly. And it goes into judgment. Yeah. But I even, even at that, it's like, well, they do that because they wouldn't operate like that. So of course they're going to do that. Or, right you know on. what I mean? And it brought so much like understanding and clarity to why people do what they do. So then that kind of, you know, over the years and, and the emotional issues that, you know, we all went through that drew me to the emotion code of body code. Then it was like, okay, now we can address some of these imbalances. So like, if you are a blue and you stay in judgment and bitterness all the time, Let's unpack like some of those life experiences, remove some of those emotions and disempowering beliefs that cause you to be judgmental all the time or critical all the time because life isn't fair <laughs> and and embrace that goodness that you have about you that is operating in integrity and your moral compass points north all the time, right. you know, but not everybody does that. So how can you use that for your strength? But disconnect from needing everybody else to operate like that too or whatever. Yeah. And so the emotion code and body code for me was like, okay, these are the imbalances that you have collected along the way, the emotional baggage you've collected along the way that takes you out of who you are. So now this, this is the design. next, so it's called the human design. human design. So as I've gotten into this, it kind of, um, does it support it? You think it goes? Yes. With well, the because I yeah. think it's so much more, so the the people code and, and color code is like a personality type. This mm. is like who you are wired to be. It's like a blueprint mm. of your design. Okay, now I'm excited. Okay, about so yeah. yeah, and I'm excited too. And there's others, chart. like I'm you like, said, green. There's like yeah. the peak assessment, yeah. which is yeah. different colors. They're all very similar with yeah. different things. But yeah, this really it, like it takes like a flat idea and goes like this. <laughs> Oh, cool. So, so if you just just so it. you can see, like, okay, I'm looking at your chart. So we all this is like a blueprint of a house. It's like here's where your wiring is hooked up. This is uh, why you're driven by this. This is why this is important to you. Or this is how you are wired to be, but because of your conditioning in the family that you grew up in, you're not utilizing and tapping into this strength. That's why you don't feel like you're in alignment. Yeah. So it's super exciting. I look at your chart and I'm like, okay, these energy centers are lit up, which means There's this flux is capacitor. where, yeah, this is where you are defined and these open areas are where you're open to conditioning. And so it's, it's, you're open to more um, like deeper understanding, but you're also open to taking on other people's perspectives and conditioning so then you have to sort out is this my belief or theirs hmm. does that make sense yeah so um when i look at your chart i mean the first thing i see here is these four arrows pointing left it's like you are structured in how you learn you are structured in so like your parents upbringing that complemented that hmm. so here's what i love about this kind of stuff take what you like and leave the rest. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like, oh, this is who you have to be or your personality <laughs> yeah. type. This is how you have to it's be. It's not like, definitive. Yeah. It's, it, but it, it gives a lot of insight to why you do what you do. And a lot of it makes a lot of sense. Cool. I like to read this stuff and go, I like that one. Yeah, that's me. And I'm like, mm, I don't like that one. That's not me. 
Uh, so my kids kind of laugh at me with that. But... So structure. So yes. So even the way that you manifest, the way that you learn, um, and so okay. But I look at this and go, okay, your your energy type is a manifester. So there's different types. So there's a manifester. There's a generator, there's a manifesting generator, there's a projector and a reflector. So those are the energy types. You're a manifester, you're a starter. Kevin is a generator. He's the motor that keeps it going. So probably in your life, you started things and you didn't finish them. Oh, I felt like I was telling Mr. Mal, I'm like, I feel like I'm the only one that gets something going. Yeah, you are. Like if but I you're wanted the starter friends of society. over at my house, like if we, if I wanted my friends to do something, I had to Get it going. Initiate. You're an initiator, yeah. right? And he is, he's, I'm a manifesting generator. So I'm both. I can start it and I have the motor to do it if it lights my soul on fire. If it doesn't, again, I don't see it through, which in society, that's like you're a quitter. But I'm like, oh, I'm just not interested anymore, yeah. you know? Right. Um, but, but for like a straight generator, it's like they have to wait and see. And then they are the workers of society that, um, master skills yeah but if they're thought that they had to have to or if they're taught in their family structure or whatever to start it and that's not aligned with who they are no wonder why it's so difficult because like this is what successful people do they wake up at this time and you know and like for projectors they aren't the workers of society they manage the energy they're kind of like the qc so sometimes they get called lazy but they are using their energy in a different way and they aren't the workers. But mm. if you're taught that you are a worker in society and you can't sustain that kind of energy and you burn out, you're lazy and get labeled. So what yeah. I love about this is it's Yeah, so how like, much more like did that just open you up to be like, oh, oh totally. rather than just like, mm-hmm. hey, you're a red personality and you like power and get shit done or yeah. yellow personality or blue personality. It just takes it and it says, okay, there's your personality, but this is why. Yeah. And what you can do to start moving Dude, that this, needle. It's like right online. Like if I, I could start a book, I could ri- start writing a book, but I, I cannot finish that. Yeah. Like I, any creative process, I could start it. Right. That's sweet. But like, oh my god. But see, this is where you end. and you I'm and like, I, uh, you and I. That's why, that's why we're, we team up. That's why we team up because yeah. Yeah. you you start it, then Once it's we going, hook it up to my thousand horsepower engine. You're drumming it, <laughs> yeah. And then and, I generate. And, and if you yeah. let him, then it's not a competition. There's not a problem. You don't. There's not the judgment. But this is what excites me about this. I'll tell you, just sure. because I mean, we didn't even plan this, no, and this, this is totally plays off the right into what we were talking about earlier. But so in in the human design, what it really is is it's like this is the pl- blueprint of who. It, so it kind of marries like um a little bit of astrology because like your time and your date of birth and the time and place you were born matters in calculating this um so it's kind of like how where were you plugged in like energetically into this system Mm -hmm. i don't want to say the matrix because that's got a different connotation we talk about but do you know what i mean like where did you plug into what's your part in this experience right energetic system yes exactly and so um it's that plus um kind of the chakra energy um centers right and then um some just just a couple just a bunch of different systems but so what what it is is it's this blueprint that's like this is who you were designed to be before you were conditioned by the family that you were raised in the mm-hmm. religion you were raised in even the state or country oh absolutely right if you were born in china you would have a total different set yeah, of conditioning culture, right everything. totally but when i look at this so so the the starting point is like what's your type What's your authority and what's your strategy? Meaning what what type of are you? You're a manifester. So then it, then what's your strategy? How do you do things? And then what's your authority? By what way do you feel that that's aligned? So the first place I go is you being a manifester. So it says this, the starting point in human design is your energy type. We are all built different uh, to function differently with different skills and different ways our energy works. And when we align with that, Rather than do things the way the world tells us we need to do things, we create success and happiness with so much more ease. And it's more enjoyable because it's the way our souls actually crave doing life. Your energy type tells you how you're built to operate, and that's arguably the most important aspect of your design. So here it is. Manifestors are wild, strong, playful creatures. As a manifester, you were born with a very strong sense of who you wanted to be. You were born already knowing how to raise yourself. So enter in controlling Mm -hmm. parents. That's already out of alignment. Right. Right. 
So then makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but it actually um, okay. So, but it but it's likely that the adults in your life were told to discipline and regulate your natural urges because that's what they're told is the right thing to do with kids, right? Um, but to the T. Yeah, exactly. But the thing with discipline is it actually constricts your energy, which is interesting because everything you did was for discipline and it actually goes against who you were designed to be (laughs) in your search of who you are. Right. Right. Um, okay. Back to this. So I get excited. Yeah. I love it. I love (laughs) it. Because I'm like, okay, so then we can use the emotion code and body code to go, okay, what was the belief system? You just have more tools. Exactly. To that you thought discipline was your answer when it wasn't. So we got to undo some of that programming, we've got to find the belief and the emotion that's attached to it, clear that out so that you don't even have to learn who you have to be. Your soul already knows. So it's just this, it's a deconditioning is what we need to do so that you can live a life of alignment. That's been like my whole, from like 24 on till now, 34, so 10 years. Yeah. My whole adult life's been deconditioning whatever I learned. Yes. Yeah. That's what well, it feels we're like. just... But that's the cool part with this is like you could find this, you could do, you could color code yourself, but then it's what specific emotions created the beliefs that's preventing you from mm. being in flow or being your authentic and self. And the body code can help with that. And yeah, then we use the emotion yep. code and body code to remove those subconscious programs. And then we use heart math. the heart yep. to Stay open in. up the heart well and create the new neural pathways of new belief compounded with high energetic emotion and possibility and intention saying, Hmm. oh, if I do it like this, this is a better efficient and effective result. And this brings to me more of what I'm looking for rather than more of what I don't want. It's really cool how you guys organically are adding all these tools Mm -hmm. with the end goal is just like harmony in who you are. Like, oh, yeah. it's it's so, expansion and love so and expansion in in gratitude and peace, knowing that you're 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 creating that love and self and that you're emanating that out and you are being able to manifest mm-hmm. whatever you want to manifest. Well, I'll, I'll finish this, and then we can finish talking because oh, it just excites me and it it yeah. covers so much of what we started talking about at the beginning of this. But so okay, so this discipline it actually constricts your energy and tells you it's not good to be a wild, spontaneous, strong creature when that's exactly what you came here to be. Mm. Um, not only are you meant to be like that, but that's actually when people will love you the most. So by default, you will get that validation that you were. Um, seeking, but it will be in, like we said, a bonus to you living aligned and you already feel that. And then people recognize that. Um, so even if they don't know that consciously, that that's what you're doing, they will be drawn to it because you will feel so connected to your purpose in that. Um, that's also when you'll be the most successful, impactful, and feel the most peace with yourself. So even though you may have been praised for being obedient and abandoning your own wants, giving yourself the licensing to do whatever (laughs) says the F you want, (laughs) um, it's your role in this lifetime. So I'm giving you permission right now, Blake Norton, to do whatever the heck you want, because that's that's what you're here to do. What did it say? You're a spontaneous wild creature. Yeah, you are. I'm a wildebeest. I'm a wildebeest. (laughs) I'm a wild stallion. But you're you're an initiator. So the role of a manifester is you're an initiator. You get the ball rolling. You start something, create movement, often without even trying. Um, That's what others can then join in or follow you on. You don't have to figure out how to create movements. You just have to follow your urges because those are the very things that will create the right impetus in others. When you're uh, being fully you, your actions will always create a spark in others and they can react to they can react to that. This is you. You are the cause and everyone else is the effect. I like that. So, I mean, there is so much more. We could do this all day. But when you start to... I, when this, when you start to identify with this and, and I look at like your different, um, gates and channels is what they're called. Like what's lit up in your blueprint. What, what, what wires are plugged into what outlets and what switch do we need to turn on? Yeah. It's like, well, no wonder why I've struggled with this or that because I wasn't tapping into that heart quality is what heart math calls them. Right. It's all the same type of thing. Yeah. Um, but it, it like gives us permission to be who we were created to yeah. be, but outside of social conditioning or yes. societal conditioning, right? It's uh, it, people. I think people, the most 
le- one of the leading causes of like mental unhealth, mm-hmm. unhealthy mental thoughts and just unhappiness mm-hmm. in general is when people are trying to force yes a square a peg into a round hole. Yeah. Yes. They're trying to force yeah. something. Um, and people are so scared. People are so weak these days. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I've seen it in some really good friends of mine. Um, I've seen it in, in family. Uh, they are so afraid of social repercussions or they're afraid of rebuilding or reworking. I, I kind of, my life has been rebuilt so many times, you know, it all came crashing down. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would encourage everybody to go get, go get in a rock bottom, mm-hmm. find it, fall flat on your face, fail, and then get up. But I, I'm not, by no means am I like some super successful person, but I, I think the success that I've drawn in this life is... Is that exactly? Um, mm-hmm. That explains it way better, but it's like spot on to how I feel now. After you know, ten plus years of deconditioning my yeah. mind, I, I'm not. I, all my belief system is completely rewritten. It's like I was yep. a hard drive. That's the oh, the operating system was completely rewritten. It was ripped yes. out. Yeah, super painful, and people are so scared to do that. They're so scared to leave their religions. They're so scared to stand up to their family. They're so scared to not do what their parents say, even in their late twenties and thirties, when they're in charge of their own life. These people are scared to death to defy something that their family has said or do or whatever. Yeah, I know so many people like that. Well, even into to diving into their trauma because everyone has trauma. Yeah. Every single person has emotional trauma. It's not just the, and like we said in the beginning with military service or going to the gym, there's different levels and variances of trauma. Absolutely. Right. But trauma could be you being told no as a child that you couldn't have a sucker at the store, which now develops into the belief that you don't deserve things. That's emotional trauma, right? Because it's not serving you. Mm -hmm. So when, when we look at that and then, you know, to your point, it's, you know, a lot of people are even unwilling to look inside at their demons or you know, whatever you yeah. want to call it, their trauma, because they don't want to know why they're not, Yeah, like uh, how much better they could be, yeah. right? Because, in, it, because it boils down to what's your measuring stick of success right. in the world we live in, it's money, right? It it's money, it's houses, it's cars, it's things. And are those things great? Sure. But I'll tell you what. I know a lot of people that have a lot of money that aren't happy. Yeah. So what's your measurement of success then? Well, right. Su- so yeah, success I would success is money is mm-hmm. I think success is more equated to like physical things, but your happiness is the intangibles. So that's what we yeah. have to start changing. Mm-hmm. Gary V says it very well. I don't know if you watch Gary. Oh, v. we do. I love Gary. He's Vee. like, we got to rewrite the the definition of success because he's like, I know more people. That make fifty to seventy thousand yeah, dollars a year. That, that are happy, that have peace, that have flexibility in their schedule. Mm-hmm. They enjoy what they do. They have tons of love with their spouse, their partner. They have love with their kids. They have all this time and freedom. Do they have a Ferrari? Do they have an Escalade? Do they have these nice things? No. Do they live in this ex- expensive mansion and things like that? No. But I, I 100% agree with them with the amount yeah. of people that we've worked with. Uh, and a lot of the people that I know, there are a lot of people that make a lot of money that by the world standards are highly successful, but then go home and are haunted by their thoughts, are haunted by their emotions. And they're not happy. They're not at peace. They're not living in flow. They're not living in, in compassion and in love and gratitude and appreciation. They're very hard workers and I'm not calling anyone out by any means, but I'm just saying is there's so much more to life and it's simply identifying those emotions and those beliefs that are holding us back because what I believe is that if you feel good, most of the day, if you're yeah. operating in gratitude and appreciation, right? What do they say? When we appreciate things, things appreciate, right? Yeah, when we like live that. in appreciation for all that we have, all that's possible, and we start feeling really good and you get that heart field expanded, that brain field expanded, those, that intuition flowing and you, we, we raise that vibration right? Then the vibration of what you desire will automatically start showing up. Yeah. So can you work hard and accomplish things? Yes. Can you enhance that and tap into your heart qualities 
open up that heart with that expansive magnetic field, which then in turn opens up the brain, which raises your vibration to a level that will start attracting more peace, more happiness, more compassion, more uh, joy, right? Life's to be enjoyed. And I think we're, we're, when we talk mental health and we're running a little long here, I think so we'll wrap it up real quick with whatever. But to me, and all that I've seen and all that I've studied in, in, in the brain and the heart in, in moods and behaviors and everything like that, I believe that the reason that they're, that people struggle with mental health, which is wrapped in with emotional health, social health, you know, nutrition, it, nutrition, yeah, all physical. of it in combined emotional, yeah. mental, spiritual, physical. And then that flows into all of our relationships and then into our abundance, right? What are you experiencing in life? Um, is the lack of authenticity in self the the conditioning that you're doing that is taking you outside of what you who you are and what you truly desire mm. right that causes depression that causes anxiety is thinking that it should be different and so for me it's that the more we can tap into our authentic heart and self the more peaceful we'll be. And we show this on studies. We, I mean, 400 peer reviewed studies. Uh, but then that's what we do with the emotion code and the body code, uh, especially on our, our weekly raise your vibration calls. We remove these emotions collectively, open up the heart and the mind so that we're living in gratitude and appreciation. And look, can we be depressed yeah. and, gra- and grateful at the same time? No, we can't. That's an impossible state. So, yeah. you know, it, I think those things just come because we've been so conditioned to look for external validation. We've been so oh, conditioned yeah. to have these external things. Well, we're, we're conditioned, too, on what equals healing. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, th- to anybody listening to this, the traditional methods of going to a, a counselor or a psychiatrist and all those things, there's value in that, but... It's like mainstream, like going to a pharmaceutical company for you to put a Band-Aid on your issues, going to a psychiatrist to help him to so you can talk about the problem more. Like I have never – I've done some sessions with you guys. I've done some other emotion code and other things. Uh, I never have once gotten into the dirty, grimy details of my trauma in depth with you guys. Mm-hmm. And I've experienced more uplifting health and healing than I have with laying on the psychiatrist's couch and just going into all the details for some weird reason. I don't think that's where the healing is. Right. I think there's part of it. You, you, you got to go back and face some of your trauma, relive it, understand it fully. But that's not the full process of healing. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if you guys are looking for healing, if, if your mental health is wrong, if you have some trauma that you need to deal with, like dealing with it in a positive way. This is the future of medicine. This is the future of, of, of mental health and physical medicine as well. Because Alti did some work on my shoulder from, you know, hundreds of miles away. Mm-hmm. Um, and my shoulder has is, is been bugging me for months. Um, and there's a whole nother podcast about that, just what, what that is. But my mm-hmm. left shoulder is associated with... B- holding and carrying up, lifting up the work or like shouldering the responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. is very common. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Brandon Neal about that because mm-hmm. you've done work on him as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's perfectly in line. As soon as I quit my job and started working from home with Mal, we're full into Blue Form Media now. Mm-hmm. Um, and Which my awesome. my masculinity, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> my my desire to to succeed and to be uh, like important to provide, to do all these things. I'm shouldering. I feel like I'm shouldering a lot, mm-hmm. even though Mal does all the work, <laughs> but <laughs> she's I'm, like, really are you, but oh. I'm the star. That makes so much more sense though. Cause yeah. I'm, I'm the starter, the manifestor, yeah. what you call yep. it. Uh, yep. that Mal, Mal tells me all the time. She's like, we couldn't do this without your vision. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's what I feel like I have is I have a vision to do something, to make something happen, to create an item, to create this, to create a story. 
to well, create Blake something. Blake is the manifester, and I'm the generator. Yeah, Blake, oh, probably. Totally. I was, I was gonna. We should yeah, do it on well, now. Yeah, well, this. I, I, that is the exact thought that I had. But see, if you have, if you, if, if you're looking at this um, production as I have to start it and carry it, then a lot of the 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 perception of that is it is a burden to carry when yeah. maybe that's not your role. And even just knowing, oh my gosh, I, that's, that's not is. even my strength. I bet your shoulder eases up even more, you know? That's because I can feel it right now because there's a lot of things like that me and Mal talk about and where we, where, where we, where we want our business to be, I can see where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And I can see where we're deficient and where my skills are deficient. Doesn't mean we can't learn new skills. Sure, we are absolutely. Right. But I'm like, oh, I, I'm thinking about all the skills because Mal, Mal can attest to this. Because editing a podcast is very time consuming. Mm -hmm. right. I can do it. We've done hundreds of them together. Mm -hmm. But like the idea of me doing that every day, that's <laughs> is the a generator. burden. That's the burden. It is a burden. And I'm like, that's why my shoulder hurts right now. I can feel it. <laughs> it like, doesn't ah. light you up. It yeah. doesn't. It's not where your strength is best utilized. Yeah. You utilized um but that for her is serves a different purpose that's the her, quality of that her matters to her yeah and and that's why she likes the control and of that because it's like yeah because she gets to control all the details uh-huh mal what did you say mal was an intern at a radio station in salt lake x96 oh, oh yeah <laughs> she interned there for a little bit sweet mal what did you say they brought you on the show and like on your way out, it was like an exit interview on the show. Mm -hmm. Can you tell that story real quick? Um, they just said with they, Carrie, Bill, and Gina. Hell yeah, man! <laughs> Sweet. Um, they just were like, "Hey, what's one thing you've learned?" Or just give us a nugget. I guess it really was their point, and I just was like, "It's all in the details." Yeah, it's all in the my, details. My leaving quote. Mm -hmm. It's all in the details. Yeah. It's all yeah. the details. But like, I, I'm I'm good at like setting up the details. I like I love the details too. But like. Um, carrying out the details day in, day out, yeah. day in, day out. I go, I go bonkers. I go crazy. I can't, I have to find a new job. I have to find something out. But if there's a new problem, like I can, I can manifest a solution for that in yeah. a unique way. And I, I would of get in trouble in the Marines because we'd set up this training exercise with live fire, live rounds or, <clears throat> or whatever. And they would tell us how they wanted to do it. Like our commanders up in the tower, like watching. Our commander was funny. He's the only guy wearing cold weather gear, and all of his Marines are just in standard boots and utilities and, like, two feet of snow. Mm -hmm. And we have cold weather gear locked in a Connex box, and he's <laughs> the only one with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could – <laughs> Fox Company 223, you know who I'm talking about if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Tufty. We'll call him Tufty. Tufty. <laughs> this is his nickname. But anyway, there was some good things about him. Uh, but he's up there and he wants us to do this by the numbers, by the book, so he can like look good. And that's not going to keep us alive in combat. It's our ability to think and, and analyze yeah. and stuff. And so they wanted us to do this thing. And you, you put your machine gunners up here as the support by fire. And then you guys run and then mortars drop and then all this stuff. And, um, and I was like, well, I'm going to take some leeways and I'm going to put the machine guns over here and we're going to like, we're going to follow this ravine and this wadi. It's like oh, almost, it's like questionable. Is it out of the training area? Is it in there? We're like, I don't care. It's right there. Like tactically, I would use this ravine to conceal my movement mm -hmm. and get to the objective and, and attack. And it's like, so we did that and we got way closer. Then we called the machine guns to pick up mortars hit instead of running 900 meters Mm -hmm. like through field and bramble and brush and, you know, getting there as quick as possible while mortars are hitting our enemy, keeping them suppressed, keeping them down. That's if you don't move without suppression, you're it's suicide. So instead of that, I, I went through this like little wadi river, ain't the, river <clears throat> and uh, it was, it was great. We did good. I, there was tons of things I could have done better. It was a really good learning experience, but it was different. And so all of my enlisted sergeants were like patting me on the back. Like, yeah, that was that's genius. We were waiting for somebody to use that, but everybody was so worried about just falling in line mm -hmm. that I would, I would I went like third out of like eight squads. I went third, and then everybody else started doing their own thing after that. And but I, I got in trouble. I got chewed out because it wasn't textbook or whatever. But the the real enlisted guys they they looked at me and they just gave me that nod and that was all the validation i needed mm -hmm. i don't need the validation from the officers i want the guy that's that knows his shit right and they just nodded at me and i was like cool even though it, it was i made a ton of mistakes on that but like 
mm-hmm. just the fact that I chose something different and stuck with it, I found solutions. And uh, being open to – what did you say about being open to, like, other people's opinions and I can, like, differentiate who's who? Mm-hmm. You said something like that when you were first talking about it. But I just remember one of my new guys right out of boot camp, he came up with this idea and – the core of the idea was brilliant, but the way he pitched it and just everything he – his whole vision was really lacking. But I gave him the credit. I was like, that's a great idea actually. Not the way you want it to happen, but like thank you for that. Nugget. The idea in <laughs> you know? general. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, there's some things you're oh, missing. Oh, were you there, talking but... about people will love you the, the, when you're acting that way the most even if they don't know consciously that that's what you're doing? Is that what you mean? I think I think the guys – I think I gained respect for my mm-hmm. friends. Uh, I was I remember just being – treated and like i was given further responsibility by these upper enlisted guys after that because i'm kind of just the jokester you know like they didn't even think i should be leading a squad because i'm always like making star wars sound effects or like you know, <laughs> because you're strong that. and playful yeah. and wild yeah i do i do funny <laughs> stuff or and you're and you initiate like yeah. you're an initiator you're you you start things I, I hope so i mean i think that's accurate i i like it hey but. Listen, uh, lines if you up. like it, let's go with it. If you don't, we'll, we'll toss it out. Yeah. But um, we'll go into it a little deeper, and I think it will answer a lot of your your lifelong questions at yeah. you know, your 34 years of age. But um, no, I, I just I think it gives you permission to, to I, I do be like who that. you are, you know? And, and it's, it's cool. Uh, Mal can attest to this too, but we've been, we've been finding out more about each other in this regard, mm-hmm. right? And understanding... Understanding your life partner is crucial if you're going to be married for a long time. But if you really want to accelerate that and get to know them faster and you, you really want to go through some hard times quickly, start a business together <laughs> with your partner. Right? You guys are doing the same thing. Right. And like you, now that we're full into our podcast production company, right, it's like we, we don't have a choice now. Mm-hmm. We burnt the ships. Mm-hmm. So we're like, well, fuck, we got to figure this out. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so we're like, there's no way back, and so it's so hum- it's so humbling. We can't, we don't have the luxury Burn of the just yeah, yeah of, of ar- arguing, and then five days later having, you know, you go on the road and, and you sex, you know, like we don't have that luxury. We, we have to get a solution now. Yeah, right. like we have to overcome this by like tonight because we got we got clients coming over. We got this happening. We got right. That. Um. And it's been really, it's been really nice growing with Mal and understanding now that I, I guarantee you she's a generator, hundred mm-hmm. um, percent. Because without her doing this like yeah. day in day out, I would go nuts. Um, and then also without me, I, nothing would get started. I mm-hmm. think this whole room, Mal was the generator. She had the money for it. Yeah. And I had the vision. Yeah. Um, yeah, Blake's like, we're going to format the room this way. I'm like, I don't see it, but go ahead. I yeah, she was like shit. stressing out. She's like, this doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm like, trust me. And I'm like drawing, you know, how I write. <laughs> I'm like, you can't crayon. see my vision. Look at my <laughs> knife carving in the table. Yeah. This is that. Just a stick figure <laughs> holding a microphone. You're like, hold on. I'm a manifester. Yeah. So let me yeah, and so she's play to my design yeah. here. And trust thankfully, uh, she's had enough trust to let me take the reins like on that regard and then and then she sees the end result and she's like, oh, okay. Um, but then uh, vice versa. Thankfully, she has the energy to put into yeah. whatever vision I present. Right. It's like, totally. it's a great team dynamic. Then yep. um, I love her. She's awesome. Thanks, Mal. Thanks, Mal. We Thanks, love her Mal. too. Yep, we do. Hey, yeah. well, and, love. and you started like the idea probably, but it was her ability to have that motor to keep it going while you were still doing your other work that oh, yeah. generated income. And she got this going, like she kept it going um, long enough for you to be able to jump ship from your other job to, yeah. you know, like had you started it and, and couldn't maintain it enough to be able to have something going to come back to, to, you know, take exactly. it back from here. So, you know, both of you. Well, on that note, too, like my other job, uh, I've been in sales for a lot of years and I've, I've done so bad in sales sometimes. And sometimes I did amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's just now clicking to me. It depended on the product and the process behind the sale. Yeah. Because I've always been good at talking to people. Mm-hmm. But if I'm talking to you for a three-month period to get your mortgage done, I'm all over I, the place. Like, I, I, I can't. lost interest. So yeah. when I found a quicker sales yeah. process, like I, I would sell a replacement window. So I'd be at someone's home for maybe, maybe two hours, mm-hmm. two and a half if we really got talking. But 
uh, and then that transaction was done. Yep. I started and, and then I finished it in that like sweet spot. Yeah. But like a mortgage, I used to sell mortgages and I was I was so bad. That was you didn't the have the motor to keep going because that's not what you were yeah, built I could for. Get, I could get a ton of people in my pipeline, but like getting them across the finish line, I, I'd lose interest. I'd be like, oh my gosh. You know, I, got, I got all these <laughs> these steps along the way. Like it was really hard for me to digest the the full three month or two the month whole cycle. Process, yeah. Right. Yeah. But like, is that, have you had a similar thing with your sales? Like, do you, does it, because you're selling, you run a sales team at Comcast. Um, I, I do more. Mine's managing relationships, but I've sold a lot in my yeah. in my life. Um, yeah, I I mean, yes and no. As the generator, I'm I'm pretty. I've always been really good at holding people's attention, whether it's short or long amount of time, hmm. and getting that done. Um, but look how valuable this is just on <laughs> like, look what you just figured out. Oh, dude. But like for me too, <laughs> like I know where my, my strength is in connection. Mm. So like a, a relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very, very good at connecting with people right out the gate because I'm very genuine, mm-hmm. but then maintaining that. Yeah. Like, Cause Kevin, he's good at the details and, and following through and like, you know, he's probably the only one on his team that will take his phone on vacation and answer the calls or, you know, and, and nurse, like uh, maintain it all through the whole process. Me and you, we lose interest and, and maybe even you more than me. Cause I'm a manifesting generator. So I have a little bit of a motor if it's uh, something if I'm it super interested that she in. Likes. Yeah. yeah right, if it, right, if right, I'm not, yeah. then, Sorry, but, I gotta wrap this up. Oh yeah. Oh, your buddy. Yeah. Here. Yeah. But oh yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll we'll do another one because this is why we wanted to have Blake on again is because we 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 sit here before or after our podcast mm. and we just talk about all this information. We're like, <laughs> no. crap. We should just mic ourselves we up. Just sit down. Yeah. yeah so thanks for rule. being on yeah. today. Oh, but like the bottom line for us is that th- mental health is such a huge thing. Uh, at the same time, it's a it's a habit and a consistent thing. There isn't one thing you're going to do that's just going to solve your mental health. That's just going to take you to the next level, and then you're good. You don't have to do anything else. It's like the gym. It's like work. It's like anything else. It takes daily habits, daily consistencies. But at the end of the day, until you raise that vibration, that's the key. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're here to do is to help people raise their vibration, because until you raise your vibration, you're going to keep dealing with the same emotions, the same thoughts, the same beliefs. And that's not going to allow you to get to the heights that you desire, have the peace, have the happiness, have the joy, Mm -hmm. because life's to be enjoyed. So uh, if you've been listening to the podcast, we're going to throw this out there. Uh, We're going to put a a free consultation link on our website. If any of this has resonated with you, uh, if you would like to raise your vibration, that's what our Wednesday night call is at six, raise your vibration, mountain standard time, six o'clock. It's 45 minutes. We remove the emotion collectively. There's a topic we cover. Uh, it's live coaching. We give you, uh, the examples and habits on how to do better with things that come up in your life. Uh, like real quick, uh, this last Wednesday, we talked about, uh, the need to, to please people. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. kind of validation, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not kind of, mm-hmm. but that is validation is, is, mm-hmm. uh, one of our, uh, someone on the call wanted to, uh, she said, I want everyone to like me. Yeah. I want to be everyone's favorite. And so Alti identified the emotions that resonated with everybody because everything we go through, everyone has a different circumstance, but it's the same emotion. Yeah. Right. And so we removed that emotion and then we got into meditation and, and really, did the opposite implanted a new emotion in the, in the nervous system, heart, nervous system and mind. But the bottom line is we raise that vibration. The more we raise the vibration, the more that other stuff just falls out of resonance. Mm. Right. And so, um, but tactically it was like, well, are you your favorite person? And that made everyone go, huh? Yeah. So these calls are great, but if you desire to raise your vibration, uh, click on the free consultation 
talk with us. We'll run you through. Like there is so much we can work with, with the design, with removing the emotions, activating your heart rate variability, getting your heart rate variability up. But there, we'll put that free consultation on there. But to wrap it up, thank you for listening to the Healing Works podcast, where our intent is to raise your vibration by removing those emotions that that hold you back, those thoughts that hold you back, and accessing the full power of your heart so you can keep that vibration expanded and attract into your life the things that you want and have joy in life. Thanks again. Have a great day.